you know what? You got riots. You got fucking COVID. You got Black Lives Matter. And you haven't heard a word from the fucking Scientologist, have you? <laughs> not, a and if any, not a fucking peep, those cocksuckers. And all those parades around Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> they ain't out there giving out IQ tests, are you? <laughs> Greetings from Podcastville. The Church of What's Happened Now is brought to you by MeUndies. Listen, this might not be the summer you had in mind, but you got to do what you got to do to stay fucking positive. And it starts from the inside out. Having comfortable, fucking breathable, tremendous underwear is a good way to fucking start. I'll tell you what. I don't like wearing shorts and underwear. The shorts go up my ass. The underwear go up my ass. Yeah, it's comfortable. It's cool. But I don't fucking like it. It's horrible to be uncomfortable. And me undies is the social opposite of being uncomfortable. It's comfort. It holds your little fucking nutsacks like a like a midget's hand holding your fucking nutsack. Listen, I call the mailman the underpants fairy because lucky for him, he doesn't have to look under my fucking pillow. Go to me undies and get the world's softest underwear delivered right to your motherfucking door. I've been dealing with me undies for years now. My whole underwear desk is me undies. I got colors, patterns, and guess what? My wife's got the same fucking color. Now, I'm not a half a fag. We don't mix and match. We don't put on the same colors. We ain't into that. <clears throat> but that's how deep me undies goes. They're tremendous. You also get savings that are clearly an early access plus free shipping. That's if you sign up for the undies membership to get a new pair every month. And that's exactly how I would start off with this collection. They're made from micro moldra fabric, and it's actually made from trees. So do me a favor. Get 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee right now. Go to MeUndies.com slash Joey. That's MeUndies.com slash Joey. They're fucking comfortable. They're beautiful. I still got the one. They're reliable. They're durable. Listen, if anybody's got an asshole and can blow out a fucking set of underwears, it's me. <laughs> me undies is still fucking ticking in the back. Go to meundies.com slash Joey. It's fucking June the 15th. You've been doing, you, you already did your 90 day sentence. That's it. You're out. You remember all these people? I can never go to jail. You just did 90 days, bitch. Same difference. Kick this motherfucking mule, Lee. Take your time. Oh shit, it all starts fucking today, all right? No more fucking excuses. This is the year of the fucking soldier. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker. Oh shit, Monday morning, the 15th, you're halfway there, cocklickers. The COVID is spreading. Check your pants. You never know. What? The guest today is my main man, Rodrigo. I don't even know what his last name is. Sanchez Torres. <laughs> Torres. Yeah, man. Rodrigo Tw uh, Torres. He's the co-host of What's Up Fool podcast and a dear, dear friend to me for over fucking 20 years. I mean, one of my most embarrassing nights was him seeing me on fucking meth up in <laughs> Bakersfield. I was stocked in. Stocked That was in. a Louis Bland gig. Louis Bland. He just called me a couple months ago. He's back. He's doing benefits and shit. Good man. What's going on, Rodrigo? Nothing right here. Just getting out of that 90-day sentence. Can you imagine? We would have just been getting out of jail today. We would have been looking like George Clooney in Ocean's Eleven. And shit. Just <laughs> getting out with a tuxedo on, with the half a vest on. A I've never seen nobody get out of jail with a suit on. You know what I'm saying? Everybody gets out of jail with that little fucking state-issued fucking shirt they give you from Woolworths. <laughs> And they give you that little bag with your little commie toothpaste and shit. Hell yeah. Tube just to get you over. Hop on the bus and go home. Huh? Hop on the bus, Gus. And, we need, and they give you 100 on the way out. People can't wait to get that first yardstick. Did you know that, Lee? On the way out, they give you like $114. Yeah, but that's all you have. That's it. But who gives a fuck? When you're a prisoner and you're just getting out $100, $100. That's some you know currency saying? right there. You just wow. blow it, dog. Do you get to mom's house on the way to mom's? You stop at the liquor store and see Louie. You play your lotto numbers. <laughs> it's all over, Jack. You're back. I, I mean, obviously, I think like this is easier than jail. But how similar is it? Like, how, like, like, isn't is it the same mental like place? Or? Your mind has been in jail. When your mind's in jail, your mind's been beat up by the media. 
Your mind's been told not to go out, go out. You can wear the mask. You got to stay eight feet. You got to touch this. You could get it. No, oh, guess what now? You don't get it from surfaces no more. Oh, guess what now? <laughs> you have to be person-to-person -person transmission. That's where it's at. That so, mental damage you so already all have. that mental damage, you know, it's, it's really weird. I've been talking to people lately that are opening up their businesses, and they're telling me that they're losing two or three employees, that the employees told them right out, listen, we'll cancel the unemployment. We're just not ready to walk into that situation. When I heard that, I was like, you know what? I, I feel the same way. The first time I walked into the weed store, and there was five people, I lost my bodily fluid. It's different. It, I went deaf. It takes little by little, and I've been making little steps, going to acupuncture, you know, going to the fucking doctors. I went and did that MRI. I finally went back to Novathor. I've been taking little steps. Everything is written down in case I start turning purple in the middle of the fucking night. You know where the <laughs> fuck I've been? Because now they're going to do a back check to see where you've been. Yeah, they're tracing you've your been ass. To. Yeah. So if I was anybody, I'd keep my life that simple right now. Keep your life simple. It is not God. If you believe it or not believe it, it doesn't make a difference to me. Do I believe it fully? I know there's something else involved, but since I have had friends that have had sick, they've tested positive, they've told me the results, some people ended up in the hospital, some people just had a fever for four days, you know, I don't know what it is, I can't afford to get sick, especially on the road. Like I saw last night, what, what if you were in Atlanta Saturday night? They burned down that fucking Wendy's. They burned down, I mean, when I called Lee, he was crying. Oh, <laughs> it was a sad night. I called Lee, house he was crying. I go, There's... Lee, what's going on? I go, what do you mean, th -th -th -th? what's going on? Uh, black people are jumping outside the Wendy's. I don't know what the Wendy's did. To and I can't fucking, but... yeah, yeah. They gave him chicken sandwiches, and everybody was happy fucking Wednesday. Everybody was happy when they were outside giving spicy chicken sandwiches. All of a sudden, Saturday night, the place up on fucking fire. And I know if Lee was there, he'd be looting. Lee be going in there getting those last little square burgers. <laughs> he be at <laughs> home like Johnny yeah. Wendy by himself and shit, <laughs> making Wendy burgers. He was crying when Wendy's was burning. <laughs> it's a sad day. But it's fucked up, though, because all those people, I mean, you got riots still lingering around. You got the COVID still lingering out around. And everybody that's mentally fucked, you got a couple blowhards out there. Oh, I don't give a fuck. I'm opening up my business. I'm going back to work. I understand For that. For each one of those guys, you got a thousand people that are scared. They're scared. There's businesses that have gotten the green light and still have not opened. Yeah, because I, I, I noticed a couple weeks ago they had restaurants oh. in L.A. open for, like, sit down, and a lot of them are still just takeout. They're just still takeout. Let me tell you something. People who are rushing to open have realized one thing, that not that many people are coming out. Now the real reality is coming in. This is where it's going to set. Now the real setting. realities are coming in that, yeah, you open. Now what? You thought that everybody's going to run in with this stem and this money. There's a million people in this country who live hand to mouth. There's a lot more people living hand to mouth. A lot more people fucking slinging deck. Oh, hell yeah. You know, we just don't see it because we're up here in fairy tale fucking Ville. But I know for a fact that there's people, you know, they go hand to mouth. Even in fairy tale land, they go hand to fucking mouth. So all these people who thought... I gotta get back to work. I'm losing money by the day. Once you open, you ain't gonna make that much money either. If you've noticed, every restaurant you go to, you wait a couple minutes for your food. They don't have three people back there no more. They got one guy. If 20 people decide to eat Chinese on the same day, you're waiting 45 fucking minutes. Somebody just told me they waited an hour and a half for a delivery a couple weeks ago. Well, that happened From yeah. a Mexican place. You know, it's, it, it is what it is, man. And it's gonna be a new life, and... You know, look at these stand-ups that are going out right now. I would have hated to be in Atlanta Saturday night. That would have been crazy. Trying to get out Sunday. We don't know what's going to happen in any city at any given weekend. Didn't that uh, didn't the riots a couple weeks ago kind of stunt a little bit of the shows that were out there? Like in Houston? Houston? Yeah, 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 yeah. They fucking, you know, they canceled shows. You don't know what the fuck's going to happen. I mean, right now is a time where, like, you know, you got to sit back and just look, you know? You know, Gabriel's doing the right thing. There's a lot of guys that just said, listen, we rescheduled once. They just got a call. They pushed it back. You know, Gabriel made whatever. Go to Forbes. You don't need to go out this year. Right. You don't need to put that stress on himself. There's a lot of guys who need to go out that you think the same thing. You know what? I got a wife and a kid. Maybe for six months I'll eat it and I'll go to fucking Valley Ford and sell cars for six months. Still do comedy locally. Still do 
all the clubs and everything when it opens up. You know, but that you got to adjust this. That's right. all this is. It's just a fucking adjustment. You're switching gears right now. Because I know a lot of people want to be out, got to be out there for the fans. They're going to be out there first for the people that go out there first. If not, they're going to forget about you. They're not going to forget so, about you. You know, that's, you know, I'm sure I, listen, that's a factor. You know what? I'm not going out. Guess what? I'm not, they're not forgetting about me and I'm not forgetting about them. They know. If they know anything about me, they know I'm 57 years old. They know that, you know, I have hypertension. You can hear it on my voice that I have the beginnings of emphysema. So, whatever you want to think you can think you know you got to go away to be missed you got to go away to be missed so that's it this should have shown up in your town every year and and expecting people to come to your shows and all you know i don't expect nothing from nobody my concern to be honest with you isn't even my safety to be honest here, it's a little bit of my safety. I don't want to bring nothing home. Right. And I don't want to burden my wife by getting sick or getting hit in the head with a brick in fucking some town that I go to because somebody wants to riot that night. My concern is really the audience. I would hate to get a fucking Facebook from somebody saying, hey, man, I went to your show last week at the Improv, and three days later I tested positive for COVID. You know, unless you're a fucking moron now, you're retracing your steps. Yeah. And you're watching where you're going and you're being a little bit um, open-minded. You know, not open-minded, but... Reasonable. Reasonable. There's 19 people in that circle with mask on. One of them's got to have the HIV. He had it. <laughs> One of them's got to have something. You know what I'm saying? Why go over there? Hello, how you doing? Hey, where you going? I got to go pick up the kid. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck you you know and I'm very some people yesterday I went to the park with my daughter Saturday I saw a, a, some people having a party do you know all of them had face masks on and they did a social distancing and you know there's people who care there's people who don't give a fuck I respect you too I think if I didn't have a wife and a kid I'd be a hypocrite to tell you that I wouldn't wear dick right you know I would be out there, I'd be in Vegas right now getting hit with that fucking protest of breath. <laughs> right to the neck. You know what I'm saying? Shit. If you're going to go to a party like that too, Coco, it's like, fuck, why don't you just do that party through Zoom? What the fuck? <laughs> i tell you what. I got to be honest with you. I don't want to do nothing through Zoom. Shit's horrible, huh? <laughs> I tried Zooming with my friends from high school the other night. Just, just, just for a difference. You know, I was like, how many nights can I go to the office and listen to stupid music? My friends are having a Zoom. Maybe this will cheer me up a little bit. It's been 20 years since I've seen half these guys. Bro, I just had to pull the plug. First of all, my internet doesn't do well between 5.30 and 7 for some reason. Every Probably night, height of my, everybody using it. My internet plug. just doesn't do well. It's a little sluggish. After dinner, I have an hour to put my Weight Watcher points. And fucking, it doesn't stick. I got to shut the phone off. I got to find the fucking whatever. So that was, it was stuttering. What is that called? Lagging. Lagging. And then it just got lost. And I was like, you know what? Once it lost, I was like, that's a sign from God to tap out. <laughs> I didn't really, I was going to one guy. Then I was going to one guy. And it was just not for me. And zooming is not for me. If you got to do it, you got to do it. I'll yeah. try my best to wrap around it and make it interesting, but it's not for fucking me, man. <laughs> Some of those, like, podcasts, you got to do it because the distance. That's what we're doing on the What's Up Full podcast right now. But when motherfuckers go to the length of doing comedy shows on there, that's where just like, you know, that shit's going to last there forever, too. Listen, I wanted to break. I look forward to this break. I didn't know this break was coming. But we needed this break. But listen, fuck COVID, fuck everything. What's going on with you, Joe? G? Nothing, you man. You got a fucking kid now. Yeah, and it's all different. I mean, we've been in the game a long time together. We go back a long time. You won the first place in the Joey Diaz impersonation contest. <laughs> you took Joe Rogan down. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Dog, you took him down. He still down. talks about it. He wants. He's ready for it. <laughs> but he don't have the walk. See, he lost because he don't have the walk. Like you said it before, it's you, the cadence. You came in with the walk, and you bought. He has the motion. Right, right, right. And the voice. The voice. But he don't have the walk. You got to show up with the pigeon toe. That's that, the whole thing. If you don't show up with the pigeon toe to do Uncle Joey, you fucked up already. You got to show up with the pigeon toe. Yeah. And, so, and 
No, uh, not to interrupt you, but a lot of people think that Joey Diaz impression is just that rough out the pocket, but it's not. There's like 17 versions of Coco. You yeah. know what I mean? You can be a sweetheart cupcake, and then the next thing, you know, he's hitting you upside the head with the glass. <laughs> shit. Oh, I love all that shit. You know what I mean? So it's all that in between. And, you know, but you also got to, you know, you got to love that East Coast, New Jersey fucking, all that lingo, dog. And that's what it's about. If you're into that mafia shit, like, your representation of that region of America. So it's like, you know, if you love all that shit and like, you know, you, you slick your hair back, all the, the attitude, all that shit, you got to throw that all in there. So some people just go for that, you know, fucking slice your throat, Joey. But I mean, I do the whole fucking thing with the tennis shoes, the foot, the hip, the, the looks, the <laughs> smiles, the everything. Pigeon. Somebody asked me, who do you want to play you in your movie? <laughs> you better have a pigeon toe or you better act good. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't show up with that fucking right pigeon toe, people what's have, a pigeon toe? The way, way you walk, my pigeon foot, the way it goes in. Oh, it goes in. Okay, and, like, and it affects me. It's, it's something to do with my hip, to be honest with you. It's something to do with my hip. That's why I keep fucking this knee up. I find myself driving with my heel, with my foot pointed right. In the so your legs are kind of a contradiction. Huh? So my my legs, my hip is kind of weird. It just goes to the side yeah not to sound creep or nothing i remember going to your apartment and you the way you lay down with your cats you you know you lay down a different way than you know some people you know do the little fucking yoga thing or just on their stomach and shit but you're just like you're like an octopus almost dog and you're sitting there with a cat just all like, like <laughs> Corleone, yeah dog some so, gay guy from west hollywood so it's, it's your shit's tremendous. very distinct you know your swag so you know, and you got to emulate all that shit. You're really, you're really good at, at impressions. Like, wh when did that start with you? Dude, it started a long time ago. Dude, it started with the movie La Bamba. I used to do uh, Richie Valens, but through like you know, fucking uh, the Filipino. What was the name? Fucking uh, the actor Lou Diamond Phillips. Yeah. And my mom didn't like that shit. She <laughs> smacked me a couple times. <laughs> and I, just, I don't know why. She's just like don't. And then you know, doing impressions of them, and doing impressions of family members. But it didn't start breaking until this guy that caught me stealing. They would come like uh, basically just a, like a little Mexican store would come to the neighborhood, and it's just like a big old like not a U-Haul truck, but just those big old yeah, paint box trucks. truck, yeah, exactly. But it had a bunch of shelves. It had dry goods mostly, candies, fucking warm soda, everything. I love Mexican. So people. Uh, you know, everything was cash and credit. So we'd go up there, and then the guy had a distinct voice. He looked a little way. He looked like a cheap ass Elvis, you know. And I would do impressions of him, and then that's when they started laughing. I guess it was I don't know what the fuck it was. Like stop fucking around. But then people with distinct voices. There was another guy that lived in the neighborhood right there that he had a. He was kind of gay. Well, he was gay, but he, nobody said he was gay. And he had a little voice, a little way about him. And then I would do the voice. People just start fucking, just dying. And then vo uh, doing impressions of my uncles and shit. And just people that had a distinct voice. Something that, you know, you that you notice, everybody would notice about them. And then just copy real quick. And if I liked them, too. Because, I mean, some people are like, do an impression of this fool, fool. It's like, Ugh. I can't really do it. But I feel like, if, you know, you kind of like got to fall in love with it. Same thing with James Gandolfini. That's what that whole East Coast shit right there. Yeah. It's crazy how, you know, I'm looking at you when I met you. <laughs> it was you and Vinny and you were kids and. You were still going out every night to see rock bands and shit. Yeah, man. man. Fucking Vinny. I still dude. remember you guys going to see Cake. Yeah, yeah. You we took Felipe to the took Mayan. Felipe to the yeah, Mayan. To the Mayan. Right Jesus there in Los Angeles. You know, I'm, I, the other day I was thinking you're coming on. And I was in the kitchen doing something. And I was thinking about how many fucking nights a week we were out there. Like, that was it. Monday nights we were always at that place. Sunset what, Room. Sunset Room. And I still remember looking at the clock, and it being a quarter to two, and we were still out there talking shit, eating donuts. Like nine of us, there'd be a giant a joint going across, laughing, and, you know, smoking. I did Cash. This is Morris podcast a couple of weeks ago, and he asked me a question about you know what happened. And I go, you know, I, I got a little jaded with comedy once it, and I got a bunch of emails about it. Do you hate comedy? No, I, I didn't hate comedy. I just hated what it became. It was something, it was, 10 years ago, there was nothing going on for none of us. And on those nights, how happy were we? Nobody had nothing going on. I had a movie, big deal. That's it. Everybody had one like thing going on, and that was it. And it's all these guys, nobody was getting more money than nobody. Everybody was getting $30, $35, a free drink. Remember the owner would put out a food platter? <laughs> should get devoured to the wings the wings would be fucking raw <laughs> but you didn't give a fuck because you were flat broke 
They just saved you eight bucks. You have to stop at fucking Taco World and eat, you know. Just, I, I think back of those nights, and that's what people don't understand. That that's the fun times of comedy. When I lived in Seattle with Josh Wolf and all those dudes, you know, with four guys back in a car, and you go invade a gig, like, you don't give a fuck. Like, what are we doing tonight? Rodrigo's doing a feature over at the Improv. Who's the headliner? Such and such. All we need is one motherfucker to say, fuck him. And it'll start. And it'll start. And it's like, <laughs> let's go down there. And we just go down there. Like, what's, and the headliner will look and go, what's going on? We're doing a guest set with Rodrigo. What? I was in the forum. You don't need to know nothing. Go in the back before you get smacked. <laughs> I mean, when we lived in Seattle, we were doing that shit. We were, there was, <coughs> it was gangster comedy. There was a gig on Fridays. I never showed up to her, and she paid me every week. She made me the house MC, and I was like, 25 bucks for a Navy base. I'm not going down there, but the checks kept coming. And she would call me and say, how's the room going on Fridays? And I'm like, great. <laughs> Stop. No, you didn't hurt. How long did this last? Four or five weeks. Oh. Until see, she called me. She's like, they say you haven't been showing up. I go, yeah, I do the time and leave. No, nah, he says, yeah, I mean, this Pat Wilson was her name. Good lady. She's still around. <laughs> that shit. She's got to be about 90 now. 25 bucks a week. That's a good lady, though. It was 25. It was it was it Pat Wilson. There was two people who booked that room. There was a gay Cuban guy who booked the old improv in Seattle. And he now he was booked like... The improv was closed, but the people who owned it still booked out Friday and Saturday. So he would just get a bunch of fifty dollar comics, just like fill it up, and just fill it up, and there'd be a hundred people. And then it was right across from the Pike Peak Market, right across, prime right little, across. You, prime little you spot. go to the corner, cross the street, and right there was Pike's Peak. And if you cross that corner and cross the street, it's the strip club, a uh, hundred ugly ones and one fat one. Deja vu. <laughs> was right yeah, there, yeah. right there, right there. Like, it was like the fucking hottest corner in the world. He had, I forget what his name was, Alejandro or some shit like that. But all those nights is with people. You know how many of us, out of the nine of us that were hanging out, five of us had to get up and go to work at eight? And you didn't give a fuck. Like, that's how much you loved comedy. That you had to be at work at eight, but it's like... I'm here with Martin, Felipe, Joey, Edwin. You know, there was like nine of us rolling deep. You know, I can't imagine. You know, they just George Perez. George Perez. This is 2010, 2008, 2009. This is 11 years ago. I mean, I met when I met you. I was still doing drugs. So you figured yeah, I, I met you in 2001. Years. Yeah, that's 19 years ago. I was deep in it. That's when I was wearing the. Fat, what was the name of that? Big? Uh, the, yeah, the Dada. Big Daddy. Dada. Or, or big, da, big, big, Daddy. big Daddy. But you had the Dada shoes. You were endorsed by them. They gave you a bunch of clothes. The only reason why I had Dada. Big was, Dog. Dada was because that's what they sold at fucking Marshalls. <laughs> fat I thought you were getting hooked up. No. Oh, okay. Every Friday when I get like my $45 check from the comedy store, I go over to La Brea and Sunset. What's that? Marshalls. Mm -hmm. And that's what they had. So if you wore a three X or above, you got da da like a motherfucker. That's it, Pop. You got all Black Lives Matter shirts, you know, for, <laughs> for the big, the big di diabetes, <clears throat> those big diabetes brothers. That's what you got left over. Whatever shirts they don't use at the diabetes clinic. Who are the big diabetes brothers? It's the brothers from whatever those big oh, I brothers. Like a rap that, the fat boys. Oh the fat God. boys. <laughs> so. Once the I, diabetes brothers. Once I, that's where the, the diabetes brothers send their clothes to Marshalls. So I would go in there on a fucking Friday night and bust out a new warm up suit for 30. I was in there switching tags then. <laughs> I was putting green dots on them. Remember they, remember they put a green hanger on the thing? I just switched the suit and put, rub it up. They look, it at it, look at me, get it for 10 bucks. Like it was fucking ridiculous what I was doing in those days. They weren't ready for me. The next door was a headshot store. Back in the day, there was a little on the corner of Marshalls. It's long gone. The little Asian guy that had a headshot store. So I would order the headshots on Tuesday, and he'd tell me, "Come back Friday." <laughs> and then Friday, I'd come back, I'd go get a sweater, a da da sweater, a diabetic sweater, 
and then I go in to get my headshots for the week. And there was something out. There was a 7-Eleven. It's still there by Marshalls. And all that shit's still there. They got like a, a Hawaiian food. I, I haven't been in that mall in 12 or 13 years. I haven't driven in that mall. There used to be a Blockbuster there. Right there on the corner. Mm-hmm. I miss Blockbuster. Yeah, I think the only thing that's new in there, they got a Starbucks in there now. Yeah, but that's crazy, Rodrigo, that you and I go back that long, and then we were rocking and rolling. And then 2007, when the stock market crashed, or eight. That's when we realized that we were rolling. All those rooms shut down. Yeah. There were so many Mexican rooms. The Mexicans, I got to hand it down to the Mexicans, bro. And I thank them a lot. All of them. From Sebastian Satina to Rudy Moreno. They might not know it. You know, they really made, like, it was like a double training. I was getting comedy store training and combat training at those Mexican rooms. I even got to give props to Ernie G up at the fucking Universal on Monday nights. The Rumba Room. The Rumba Room. You know, I, these are things that you did. You just did. You woke up on Monday, you went, oof, I got to spot the Rumba Room. That's number one. Let's see if the Laugh Factory calls me back. So you'd pop at 8 50, an 8.35 at the Laugh Factory and then run up to Universal City Park. And then if you were lucky, you got a 12 at the Comedy Store and you shot back down fucking from Universal. Ernie paid you forty. That's tremendous. Forty dollars. I need five. I'm five dollars away <laughs> from my goal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ten dollars. I can put a nickel in the gas tank and really get the party started. I I, I, I know you're saying that you miss those times. And I get it. But like, is it sustainable? Like, if you were still at fifty-seven, surviving on forty-dollar gigs, would you still enjoy it? Do you think? If I wasn't doing blow. Listen, some people's priorities are some people's priorities. I look at it for the pure bottom line. Everything has a square root, correct? Mm -hmm. You're on stage. You're living in Los Angeles, and you're working at your dream. You're not Kevin Hart. Who cares? You're not Dave Chappelle, 846. You're not Joe Rogan. You're not Mark Maron. You're not. It doesn't matter. You're still in the fucking game. And your dream is still alive. Okay, so let's say this pandemic came along and took the wind out of your sails and you couldn't pay rent for a few months and you go to b- back to Boston or back to Atlanta or back to Philadelphia or back to Mexico. Does that make you less of a comic? No. You're still a comic. You just have to adjust to your surroundings now. So how am I going to make it as a local comic? Oh, shit, look at that bar in the corner. They do a sports night on Wednesday. Let me go talk to them. You got to go back to the basics. Boom, you go back to the basics. Yo, what's good? And then you have three clubs. So you got to find one of the three clubs. Listen, I'm a headliner. You and I both know it. You saw me in the longest yard. You saw me, whatever. What if What if I came in here four nights a week and emceed for you? And I promise to just do new material. I'm not here to destroy the feature. But at least you have you give your show some, you know, and I can work with the open micers. You know, that, that, you know, all shit like that. That all works. You gotta works. adapt. You gotta adapt. Go to your radio station. How you doing? My name is Joey Diaz. Uh, I'm not looking for money. I'm looking to come in as an intern. You Joey Diaz from the movie? Yeah, why do you want to come in as an intern? Because I can't go on the road and I got nothing else going on. I moved back to be close to my fucking dead uncle. I love him, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, whatever your situation is, you're always going to be a comic. You move to the Philippines, you're cutting pigeon heads off in the daytime, but at night you're doing comedy in between fucking karaoke people. Will you figure it out? If you really love doing what you're doing, you figure it out. Let's say you've come out of here and you've exhausted all your avenues. And now you move back to wherever the fuck you're from. And you get a day job, and it may be something that you want, maybe something that you don't like, but you're just paying the bills. You've cut your rent down low. You're back home, you know, wherever the fuck you're from. The rents are low somewhere in Ohio or Milwaukee. I don't know where you're from, you know. You, comedy is great at that level because you're going to get top dollar at night. 
So you're going to make a couple hundred a week extra and get your day job. It never ends. You never stop being a comic. You don't quit comedy because you didn't get a TV show. That means you didn't love it. You didn't love it from day one. You got to love this. You got to love that part of it. Yes, I love getting a nice check and going on the road for a weekend. But I'm telling you, Rodrigo, if I knew what I knew now, I'd keep it to that level, get a tremendous day job where I made great money. I, I didn't have to go into 11 and I could do all that shit. Yeah, there's motherfuckers that are doing that shit now. They do it now. When I lived in Denver, there was a dude who was an attorney. One of the funniest fucking black dudes you ever saw in your life. You couldn't get this guy on the road. People begged this guy to go on the road. His day job paid so much, and his wife loved him so much, and his kids, he couldn't go on the road. Well, he would be busted. He would come out and throw 20 minutes of heat, give him a breather, and then he'd go, you white motherfuckers like impersonations. <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be in Denver, and they'd go, yeah. And he'd go, all right, give me a minute. Let me prepare. And he'd turn around, and you'd see him do something. <laughs> And he turned back around as Vito Corleone. Black dude. Same haircut like Vito and the Godfather. And he'd come on and go, this is my impersonation of the Godfather. You ready? And he'd come on and go, the dentist fucked up my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and he would hold his face and he'd, just like Vito. He goes, this is my, I mean, he would just torment them. I still remember his jokes. He was like, I used to watch him. I go, this guy's great. And I asked people, what's the problem with this guy? I mean, he would wear an $800 suit on stage. Like Armani suits and custom-made suits. Brionis and shit. Decked out shoes. And I go, why don't you go on the road, bro? Take me on the road with you. I want to learn from you. He's like, fuck <laughs> that. I'm not sleeping on no fucking hotel bed. You know, you learn from those guys. You team up with those guys. So don't think just because there's guys in little small pockets. I've said this a million times on this podcast. They're the 20th times funnier than I am. They just never wanted to come to L.A. Somewhere along the line. I've seen it, man. got crossed. I've seen it. Like You've seen it. I've seen it. I don't know if you know who this guy is. Frank Del Pizzo, an older man. He's been around forever. And then uh, he was working the club that we went to go. It's that Captain Brian's, the other club he had before he had off the hook. And uh, he's like, yeah, guys, whatever, guys. And like, you know, giving him a, a Gandolfini impression because he's Italian and shit. He's all loving it. And then he's all at the and then uh, Philippe is all hit, hits him up. He's all, you, you want to do a spot? He's all, I'll host the motherfucker. And we're just like, yeah. you know, you don't think, you know what I mean? He's like, it looks like a dad kind of, you know what I mean? The golfs and shit. That motherfucker went up there and hosted, dude, and he destroyed the fucking oh, room. Destroyed the room. He destroyed the fucking room. If I room. quit tomorrow and dude. moved into a little suburb and just went to a little B room on Fridays and Saturday with no care in the world, no industry, I've already gone through the mill. I will light up features. <laughs> I will have feature acts quitting. I will have. There'll be the strongest surge of feature acts you've ever seen in your life. Because after four days of following me at that level, you definitely improve as a feature. Five day, five sh- through five shows. Of yeah, you got to adjust. Ooh. With no cares in the world, ten minutes. Ooh, loose. I've already, <laughs> I've already hosted for Mitzi Shore, so you're not gonna do nothing to me. That small town in Indiana, they're not gonna do nothing to me that I moved to. But Duke of Kentucky, what are they gonna do to me? Shoot me. I'm going to go up there and just lay it out for 10 minutes. That feature is going to be knocking on his boots because I know I would. At that at that level, four years, ooh, you're still knocking on your boots. You still get thrown out if they go, come into the stage. <laughs> Lee Swat, this motherfucker just cracked. <laughs> I, I you know, hate you, man. When he told me the story, I already knew. I, I'm a comic. I know how to crack a comic right before they go on stage. That's the easiest thing to do, but you can't be doing that shit to people because then people start doing it to you. <laughs> it comes around, goes around. So you got to be careful when you crack a comedian before he goes on stage. See, in Seattle, we went out to crack comedians. That's not a good business <laughs> because sometimes you end up cracking them so hard you crack yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what? You piss on that. You piss on their legs so bad you end up pissing on yourself. You've said so many disgusting things to that person. 
that it goes into your psyche oh. now, and now you ruin your set. So you put the maluka on your set. <laughs> so this poor kid's in the back dying because he's bombed, and he can't figure out why he bombed. He doesn't know that you put the maluka on him. Did you see the riots last night? Did you know you just? <laughs> Did you see how they killed that black man? They knelt on his neck. <laughs> and you get them all fired up. <laughs> and they go up on, you know, I get a black comic now. I'm at a show. Listen, I'm at a show right now. CBS is there. They're deciding on six guys for a TV show. The guy in front of, let's say it's, it's this week right now. The guy in front of me is African-American. He's done. I don't give a fuck if he's Dave Chappelle. I'll crack him. Ten minutes before, I just get next to him and start hitting him with the race riots, you know, Frederick Douglass. I'll start dropping fucking Martin Luther King. I shot with BB guns. I'll tell him, you know, Matt he, Turner and shit. Yeah, you know, fucking <laughs> I turn as a motherfucker. You know, I'll just say shit to him that'll make him think and throw him off his game. Now, is that a nice thing to do to people? No, it's not. That's a thing you use in comedy competitions. <laughs> when you go to comedy competitions. It's the same as baseball. It's the same as basketball. It's we all watched The Last Dance. Yeah, that When Jordan great, was man. coming to town, they adjusted for Jordan. So let's say it's me, you, Lee, Eric Rocha, Steve Simone, D'Agostino. We're all in the contest in Felipe. Me, you, and Lee get together and D'Agostino will always listen. I don't know what's going to happen here, but we're not letting Felipe win. <laughs> we're going to do everything in our world. We're going to light his dressing room on fire. <laughs> it's going to be one disaster. I don't know. If they order a sandwich, we're going to put a rock in his sandwich. <laughs> so when he bites into his two chips, we're going to push him right over the fucking top. We're going to put fucking itchy powder in his shoes. We're going to do everything he can. The hotel he's is at is getting three fucking bomb alerts <laughs> in the middle of the night where you got to leave the hotel and come back in. Fuck up his sleep. Yeah, that, that's what you do. We're going to refuse him from doing well, and then we got it upon ourselves. Now, who the fuck do you think I learned that from? That move, I did that move as a comic, but then it got reinstated into my head when I met James Colburn. When I did Arliss and I met James Colburn, that's my idol. You know, that's one of my big idols. If you go to Cuba and you mention James Colburn, they're like, what, Steve McQueen, all that shit? You know, I did two days on the set with James Colburn. The second day I asked him about Bruce Lee, I kept it very light. I didn't say nothing until he started talking to me in between takes. And then we were just talking. And then I told him I had weed, and it was a different story. Me, him, Alan Stevens, a bunch of us went out and smoked the joint. Here I am smoking a joint with James Coburn with arthritic hands like Edwin. <laughs> he had arthritic Hell hands. Hell yeah. You know, and he said that to me. He goes, one of the best movies I ever made was The Magnificent Seven because we tortured Yul Brenner. They couldn't stand Yul Brenner because he had just played that part. You know, the famous Yul Brenner part he played? I've told the story a thousand times out here. He played a big part. I don't Lawrence, know, I, I don't Lawrence or Arabia. You, okay, I don't know if you told me. I think it's Lawrence or Arabia. So they were telling me how they were torturing him. Just hating on him? Hating on him because they refused. Charles Bronson and Steve McQueen were like, listen, ain't no fucking Arab going to come in here and fuck up our movie. That's not <laughs> happening. And this is 1966. <laughs> yeah, man. They're like, it's just not happening. It's just not fucking happening. Not on our watch. <laughs> so this shit was American to the core back then. It, it was so funny because I was just thinking about this because they said the Formosa is open again. It was on Twitter the other day, Friday, at the Formosa. And the stories he was telling me were about were from the Formosa. They'd be shooting a movie and they would put them up around the Warner Brothers lot. Close and close walking. Close to the Formosa. Walking distance. So they would all go to the Formosa. And he's like telling me like it was me, Charles Bronson, uh, George C. Scott. Gene Hackman, you know, Damn. he was in town, so he's there, and he's. We all decided that fuck it, take him out of the movie. So every night they would call you Brennan's hotel room, fuck you, and hang up on him and shit, and knock on his door and fucking, you know, pull the fire alarm, just all the shit they did to knock your Brennan off his game. But if you're doing that, then you're too busy because you're tired. 
Yeah, man. You're thinking too. You know what I'm saying? You're always it's thinking. taking energy to it's do that shit. It's taking energy to do that shit. And the more evil that shit is, the more energy it takes. It's power, bro. So that's a different side to, to, to comedy, man. It's good to see you, Rodrigo. Oh, likewise. You too, This Lee. fucking uh, corona really fucked up just seeing your friends. Yeah. 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 Listen, bro. Yeah, it's a weird. I got a fucking child. I, I love when people call me and they want to hang out. I ain't got time to hang out. I'll see you at the store. Give me a hug. <laughs> you know, we'll talk in the back real quick because people are going to come up to us and interrupt us so we can't get into nothing deep like we're in a green room. You yeah. Know? And you don't really get to see people. And I thought I wasn't seeing people before with the store. Now you see nobody. Like, it has been a really fucking tough 90 days. So I'm happy you guys in the church have really kept it together. I hope you all have. <laughs> I've read some posts. I've lent out my support on the Facebook pages. Uh, you know, we've all gone through rough times during this shit, man. This has been prison without prison. Yeah, and what's key is what you said earlier. You know, you have to adapt. Whatever where, whatever it is you do, comedian or otherwise, if you had another hustle, I mean, shit. Because I was like, uh, I was like, I, I didn't need to make any more money. I mean, my wife works, but I mean, you feel like a fucking loser, too. You can't be just sitting there and scratching your balls and holding the baby all day. So, uh, and I, I used to do pest control, but I had all my shit, you know. So I just fucking put out on the podcast. You guys need your fucking pad sprayed, and a lot of people were calling me too. Pinch your bugs are out. Why? Who? Because I guess we had a crazy rain season. So you know, spiders and roaches and ants. So I just went to work. You know, a couple jobs a day. Boom, boom. And uh, you know, you just adjust. And that's just you know for the time being, whatever the fuck happens. I know we're scheduled to go to Houston, July seventeenth through the nineteenth. The improv. Um. But you know, you just gotta you gotta adapt to the fucking whatever it is, whether it's a fucking pandemic or not. A lot of people, you know, you know, they get caught up in like Instagram and what the what they're supposed to be doing. It's just like you know, you got to go back to the basics and you know, do you, you know? I, I I learned that the news was destroying me. I learned that media coverage was destroying me. So I tried to keep the internet down as much as I could. Thank God I got this thing. I gotta have this outline by July 14th, guys. Thank God it's kept me straight. It's painful to dip into your past, especially during a fucking pandemic, because you go a little deeper, because you got more time to think about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hell yeah. So you go a little deeper. So the past has been haunting me throughout this. Like I've said, edibles and it opened you, and uh, opened you up to some mix. paths or uh... yeah, it did. Some wrongdoings I had done in the past, and it's so weird that I I made up good with some people and some people was just they would never understand an apology you know like there's people that i've tried to make amends with and, yeah and, and, the, and those people exist as well you know somebody giving forgiveness and then you know somebody not wanting to take it you know and there's some you know no matter what you can't crack them and you there's know, people it. that i cannot i don't expect them to forgive me i wouldn't forgive them me and it was something simple like it was just something simple like, I was thinking about all the people that, from that era, there's a handful of people that I truly miss that we just don't talk. And you know why we don't talk? It's been 20 years, like this one couple that I love dearly. I dealt with both of them on a business level. I was friends with her, and I was friends with him since we were kids. And we haven't said a word to each other since 1995. Jesus. And you want me to tell you what it was over? A hundred bucks and a misunderstanding. A hundred bucks. This is two people who grew up together who made more than a hundred bucks together. We were in business together on a couple fucking things. But that's all it took. It wasn't about the hundred bucks. It was about misunderstanding of payment. And both of us don't talk to each other. And couple of years ago, I got to be honest with you, she reached out, maybe Facebook seven years ago, and I was still a little sour. I, haven't had, I hadn't had mercy yet. I was still a little sour, and now I went looking for her, and I can't find the page, so she's probably off there. You know, it's just really weird what this pandemic has done, but who gives a fuck? Where's the Scientologist? You know what I'm <laughs> Where's the Scientologist? They haven't said a fucking word. They're in their bunker, As long, Bro, Tom yeah. Cruise is alive, and that's all they give a fuck about. <laughs> Not a peep from the Scientologist. <laughs> Who's ever running Scientology? Shame on you. Like I said last week, ISIS. Where's ISIS been? 
perfect time for them to show up to one of these protests and pull a pin. Go ba 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 ba, throw some hummus in the air. Stop giving them the idea. Not, not one ISIS dude is out there. Amazing. How they just disappeared because of the coronavirus. Even ISIS is scared. They're they're always- serious, yeah. I didn't really think they're going to close all this shit down. Then it started happening. I was like, God damn. Oh, you had to close it down. You had to close it down. And if you've been to New York or you live in New York, when you're in that area, sit sit and think about what you see every day when you go into New York and sit and see why that place became ground zero. It's dense. It's people on top of people, you know, it's, and, and it's a, a subway city. It's a bus city. You, they, they encourage you not to have a car for years. That's the reason you moved to New York, not to have a fucking car. Now you're out there amongst these fucking germs. So I'm good, bro. That's All that stuff is out of me. I'm looking forward to what's coming ahead. We've already dug back into the past. Now let's see what's going to come ahead of us. I want to see what happens the next few months. I got my eye on it. Very fucking. I'm watching these businesses, like I said before, that have opened, expecting the gold rush in 1920. And guess what? Ain't nobody coming in. Ain't nobody coming in. So, you know, I'm expecting to hear every every week you're going to hear something else. Oh, yeah. Every week. And, I, my, and my heart goes out to them. You could just hold on as much as you can. You could just try. I don't own a fucking business. I don't have a storefront. I don't pay storefront insurance. I don't know what it's like to run a fucking restaurant. I don't know what the health codes are, the health hazards, food costs. How long it takes to fucking deliver the food? How long you can hold it in your freezer for? You know, what if people opened up that last week and had to board up again? This has been a nightmare. So expect to see life change as you fucking knew it. The only thing that stays the same is Uncle Joey slinging dick, smoking reefer, and telling stories on a Monday morning. <laughs> and whatever the fuck you want to do, you got to do. That's it. It's Monday morning. It's a whole new fucking week. You got a second chance to start again. And that's how I look at it. You know? I got to lift weights today. My gym is open. So I get my chick again. It's just me and her. Then she's got to take a, a half hour break, steam clean the gym. Then somebody else comes in. So her clientele got cut in half. So all this is is a pay cut. Yeah, it's an adjustment. It's an adjustment. And for right now, you adjust. You do the best you can. You know, peanut butter and jelly never kill nobody. <laughs> right or wrong? Nobody's ever died right. from peanut butter and jelly. Nobody dies from oatmeal. Unless you're allergic. Right? Nobody dies from oatmeal. Nobody's ever come on TV with a twisted face <laughs> the machine. I ate too much oatmeal. This is what happens when you eat too much oatmeal. Nobody. Right? Nobody's ever come on TV and said, you know, you know, I got heart disease from eating peanut butter and jelly on white. Well, you know. No, you don't. You got allergies. My you buddy. buy that bag of chicken breasts, those fucking kicked chickens. <laughs> you can see the dent in their chest and shit. <laughs> they got kicked like by a fucking Mexican soccer star. <laughs> they just set them loose. They give them two hits. <laughs> they give them two hits of meth and a fucking can of fucking true blue. What's that shit? Red Bull. Red Bull. And they go, go. <laughs> and they let this soccer guy go crazy kicking chickens or whatever. Tyson. Dad, buy a bag of those fucking chicken breasts, the boneless ones. They all got a little dent in him. You're like, what the fuck happened to this poor guy? He had a little dent in his chest there. He got kicked with a steel toe. <laughs> fuck up. What are you going to do? <coughs> we all suffer, man. This is it. This is part of it. The, you know, you sit there and it's fucking three in the afternoon and you've done everything you were supposed to do and then some. You even dropped off clothes at the fucking uh, poor people's house, and they're not even open up on Lancashire. And as you're pulling around, you see fucking the line at In and Out empty. If you want to eat In and Out, stupids, now is the, the time, time to do it. Just don't go at 12, 6, or 2 in the morning. You go to In and Out at 11 15. You think they got AIDS? <laughs> you ruined. You ruined Chinese food for me because I before this I didn't want to believe that they were doing cat instead of chicken, but now with the money being low, I'm like if they were ever gonna do it, this would be the time to have fucking meat. I got meat. some Chinese food the other day. It was a cat here and the fried <laughs> rice. I put it over to the side. It was hidden under the broccoli. I put it to the side. You just expect it. You I just, can't do it. See, like this over there, they got good rats. See, Studio City got good rats. They okay. clean. They got haircuts. They eat over at Whole Foods. They're like vegan. They eat hummus. 
you know, you eat a rat in Studio City. It ain't that bad. It's good for you. Yeah. <laughs> they got Gelson's and Whole Foods over here. They're not that good. It's not even the Ralphs. They give them lettuce and shit. <laughs> it's like they're eating shoes or taking pizza pies off the train. Like in New York, you ever see that rat that took the pizza, oh. the slice of pizza up the train? That that dude's unhealthy. But these rats I got here, these motherfuckers get vitamin D. <laughs> They're in good shape, right? They don't die easy, these fucking rats. Oh, hell no, man. I remember oh. one day I got a call that Rodrigo fell on his back <laughs> off a ladder. That shit happened in the Hollywood Hills, dog. And, and I'm like, Rodrigo, what happened? Nothing. He shook it off. <laughs> Shook it off. That, that, that's where that joke came from? Yes. Oh, that's so funny. That's where that joke came from. Shook it off, went back to work, <laughs> fell off a fucking ladder. Most white people would have sued, whatever. That's a mace on a Mexican back. You never see a you never seen a Mexican with a neck brace. You fell never. A, a ladder in Beverly Hills and then Man, it was everybody? over there off of Mulholland. And then uh I was back there. I didn't use my ladder. I used the the people that rent rent in the house. It was just like an old ass ladder. But I was like, oh, dude, yeah, sure. I just put it up against the porch, climb on the porch, get on the roof, right? Uh, so I start climbing up the ladder, and then she had like I guess her boyfriend or the guy that was staying with her was like uh, a, a war vet from like um, I guess the first in, in, invasion of Afghanistan to 2008 or whatever the fuck it was, and uh, he had his fucking arm like his his forearm muscle blown off, so he it looked like a chicken arm. It was it was trippy. So I noticed that, but you don't say shit. You know, I'm just going to get up on the roof, see if they got any openings, get the fuck out of here, give them an estimate. Because they had to give it to the, the homeowner. So it's not, it was a Friday, it was like a Thursday, so it's going to take some time. They can't make the decision. There wasn't going to be no check, so fuck it, right? Real quick, so I thought. <laughs> so the war veterans holding the fucking ladder. I get up on the ladder, dude, I start climbing it, and it's like, dude, the guy's little. Like, like I didn't even see how small he was, but he's like 5'5". Five, five. And I'm climbing up the ladder, and I get, <laughs> I get up on that ladder. I put one leg up on the porch, <laughs> like the roof on the porch. How high are you? Like 14, 14 15 feet. Oh. So, and as soon as I pull up with his leg, his fucking leg, <laughs> I fucking, the ladder underneath me with this leg goes out. And I see that little dude falling on his back. <laughs> I'm still looking back. Like, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> and then, boom, I come down. But So my hands hit the roof like a cat inside. Just scratch all the way down on my nails, dog. And then I grab the rain gutter. Yank that motherfucker off with me. And then the little guy's just trying to, like, I see him, like, trying to clutch, like, trying to catch me. And I just smash this motherfucker. And then I land the way I landed because I there was a fucking staircase right there. Oh, with no with no rail, just steps, right? It was a so I landed on a fucking corner of one of the stairs because oh. I, I was trying in midair to like not land on it, but I couldn't get the twist all the way, so I kind of hit, hit the corner of it, and that's where the fucking bruise happened, the contact, the contusion. <laughs> Dude, and I work? smashed that little dude, and I think he was out for like 45 seconds, a minute, because the lady runs out, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy's like, yeah, man, well, yeah, man, sorry about that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm all, fuck it. <laughs> I can't do the, I, I ain't going to do the rat estimate. I'll come back to do that shit, but you said you had spiders, right? So I had, to, you know, so I still got like, you know, I had to like do a job. I didn't want to go up there to do nothing. I'm over there spraying the pad all like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> like fucking Frankenstein and shit. Oh and that lady's like looking out the window. What the fuck is this guy doing? Like, <laughs> dude, like she's are you, are you sure you're gonna be okay? <laughs> I felt like saying like if you suck my dick I'll be better but whatever but I was like oh no I'm gonna be cool she's all cause I think uh, th in, in, in her head she's all this motherfucker's gonna sue us yeah so she's all like dude like the end he's all here's the 180 for spraying the house and here's 200 bucks if you need anything else just give me a call but I think we're gonna be alright like, oh, don't even worry about it and I wasn't even looking for shit I was just gonna just do my job 
Yeah, dude. And uh, <laughs> that's what happened. Oh, and the thing, because uh, I was talking to Coco. He's all, are you serious, bro? He's all, lay down there. Like, and he said, call an ambulance. He's all, listen, like that's like a development deal check right there. <laughs> like, it's the time, times are hard for a pimp. <laughs> and I was like, but you know what I mean? I'm thinking if I do that shit, it'll be a fucking, they'll catch me in the fucking scam and fraud. You know what I mean? It's not a scam. <laughs> the but I don't know what the fuck. But it was, you know, it was my fault. You know what I mean? I uh-huh. used that dude's ladder, fuck. I should have known better and fucking that would be the last day I ever worked if I fell off a roof <laughs> I'd be on disability for the rest oh. uh, you'd be on disability for fucking <sighs> two years you know Rodrigo I have a crazy sense of humor one of the sense of humors that I have is I love people seeing fall on ladders <laughs> I love all that type of shit you know is it is it fair is it funny like this you see this Oh, I, did you see this black guy put the firecracker on his head? What the fuck this to doing, me bro? is one of the funniest things. Like when I saw this, I fucking <laughs> like COVID in the middle of COVID, I lost everything. Okay, so when somebody tells me they fall, like I don't want to see people fall. Like when I saw Ralphie, God rest his soul, fall on Gardner, I don't want Ralphie to fall. But I'm also a comedian, and I got <laughs> and I got pain in my heart. I need to laugh from time to time. <laughs> Okay, you know, I was telling people last week, I was comparing when you go out to loot, you know, what when you go out and do the things that we saw on footage last week, the kind of hate that you have to have in your heart. You have to have a certain hate to kick an old man or, or do it. It, it. It's just something that us three don't understand. Right. But I had that hate at one time. I had that hate because my mother got taken away by God. I watched a show, a movie the other night that I can't believe it hit me as hard as it did. First of all, in all those years of me doing coke, I never even thought about getting sober. I had this contract with myself. It wasn't until I saw the movie Ray. But I go, maybe it's time. The movie Ray put out some, the other night I realized. It's a good ass movie. Dog, when at the end, when his mother, when he goes back and faces his mother and his brother comes out, he goes, it wasn't your fault. And he breaks down, and then she goes, you did. You did go out there, and you didn't become a cripple. But you let that fucking poison cripple you. Those are some powerful fucking That's crazy, words, dog. You know? And for me, right there, I was like, you know what, bro? I'm out here with these fucking savages. I got the longest shot. I've been on Mad TV. Not that I won an Academy Award or anything. I do have something going on. I do have a good girlfriend. And the last thing I want is for her to find me dead. And the other last thing I want is for me to face my dad, my mom, and my dad with a bloody nose, wherever the fuck they are in heaven, and for them to say, what a fucking disgrace. You fucking OD'd, you know? One thing about me is, listen, you want to shoot me? You want to take me in a car accident? If the good Lord wants to give me a heart attack, I'll accept those. That's all a part of living. I did not want to die as a junkie. You understand me, gentlemen? I did not want that on my fucking last thing on my fucking death certificate. I don't. We're all gonna die. Herpes, <laughs> syphilis, <laughs> something, a badass, you. something, a bullet, a car. I don't. I don't. I don't even know what to tell you. We're all gonna die. But for me, the choice I wanted was not to have this associated with drugs. I couldn't, especially cocaine. So when I saw that, it reinforced me like. Wow, this is a movie. Okay, this is make believe. But somebody wrote this. This was the mind of Ray when he was telling them. Yeah. So he told somebody this story that while he was at the re at the where you go and get clean. The rehab? The detox? The what? detox. That's the images he was saying. Yeah, those nights when he was all sweaty and when shit. He was and all off. sweaty. That's what you see. You think back to what is the square root of this problem? You know, for me, it was my father's death, the death of my mother, the death that surrounded all that, and then losing my daughter the way I did. You know, I failed as a man. So I, I, you know what I'm saying? Those were my pains. That's what made me do coke and pick my face until I fucking bled. You know, that's what made me do all these irrational movements. You have to have a bad heart. Once the heart goes good, look, I don't even think about coke. I, I don't, bro, I don't. You could put an ounce out in front of me. It wouldn't bother me. For me, I'm not a hypocrite. You could put an arrow on that. It won't bother me. 
I mean, you put a Percocet out, I might eat one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you put a Happy Pill out, I might eat one. You put a fucking Xanax out, I might eat one. But everything else, I have no interest in doing. Oxycontin, I don't want it around. You know, like you figure out what things you want to do. I decided that movie let me know that, okay, somebody else is thinking like I am. I don't mind going, but I don't I want that. my wife to go to the bathroom and see my two little fat feet on the fucking carpet. That's not going to happen. I don't want Lee to come into this office and find me after a night of snoring all night. That That's not going to happen, you know? So it's just weird how you make all these, uh, after years of being clean, I don't even know what we're talking about. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just decided you didn't want to die like that. You didn't want to die. Fuck no, man. Fuck no. And I guarantee anybody who listens to this that's on pills or booze or whatever, this is the thought that has to hit you. I'm going to die, but I don't want to die from fucking booze. I don't want my last fucking thing to be Joey Diaz died last night, pronounced dr drunk driving. He killed two people in a fucking car and he killed himself because I want to have three drinks. That's not the way I want to go. I don't want to go with nothing related to that shit. I want to go from the heart attack, the, the kidneys, whatever right. the fuck, the liver infection. My asshole's got to be getting something pretty soon. Thank God I'm going for a physical this month so I can stick the camera up my asshole again. <laughs> I'm due. You know, I mean, these are things that, what are we talking about? We're talking about something good, I forget. This reef is a good motherfucker. Little triple X from Urban Trees. Like is it the 37% that he posted Did today? Did you see that? Jesus Christ, Joey. Did you see that? I ain't fucking around, dog. If we're going to go for it, we're going to go for it. It's Monday the 15th of June, bitch. <laughs> Those edibles, though. Sorry, I remember back in the, because we're going to get to that story where I turned green. Are you talking about you know, the Spice Company? Guys, I want you to, <laughs> uh, you know, we, I got this to see the infection. Like, you got to remember, people had their licenses for maybe four years, and I wouldn't get a license because I had a psychology to this whole thing. I don't do coke. I'm the most boring person in America. I don't drink. I don't go to a bar. The only excitement I have is when I drive with weed in my car. <laughs> That's like the wildest thing I do. No cop is ever going to pull a gun on you. If they see weed on you. You're going to get a ticket. You might go to jail. But that was the weirdest thing I did. So how, many, how long do you drive to get a bag of weed? 15 minutes? That, you know when you get your paycheck on Friday, you work Monday through Friday, you get your paycheck on Friday, you're like, oh shit, six o'clock. You go cash at the check cash in place, the liquor store, wherever you do your banking, <laughs> your own Ooh. bank, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got a different place. The liquor store. Yeah, some people do banking at mm -hmm. a liquor store. You, you get that check, and what's the first thing you think of? Pussy. All right, how am I going to get, well, to get pussy, we got to get some weed. So then you drive 15 minutes to Poncho's house. You know, all lives matter. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pancho, Pablo, whatever the fuck his name is, we drive over there. You pick up $35 worth of weed, you put it in your trunk, and you drive back, right? That's the scariest thing you're going to do all day. That's the only illegal thing you do. So in my world, where I came from, where I broke the law constantly, you know, I jaywalked. When you got to think about it, you got to think about how many rope, you know, how many U-turns do I do a day? How many things do I really do illegally a day? We all do three of them. Yeah. We all made that U-turn. Yeah. It's illegal. You follow what I'm saying to you? Yeah, we yeah. all Bugs made that U-turn. I mean, little things. We all fucking don't put our blinker on, motherfuckers. I hate you, cocksuckers, with everything I got. You might as well go eat hummus and end our relationship <laughs> right now. If you don't put your blinkers on, end your relationship with me right now. End them. That is rude. That is rude. You might as well eat hummus and fucking... Put on fucking that white singer that irritates the fuck out of me, so I'll never have to talk to you again. Who's that? I don't know. I don't know his <laughs> fucking name. There's some fucking dude that everybody white. But all knows. those basic things most people don't do. No. So mm -hmm. I started saying, how many fucking rules do I break a day? I'm talking U-turns. I'm talking right on reds. You know, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Pedestrians, go fuck yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you're standing there like a mummy, like a statue of Robert E. Lee, before they take you down... 
I'm making a right turn, dog. <laughs> if you're going to stand there like Robert E. Lee, like he has traded slaves, and you feel happy about yourself, you're just going to stand on the corner with his little fucking hands, Robert E. Lee. Can you believe they're taking out all these statues? They're taking out everybody. Every yeah. George Washington, he's going this Columbus. week. Columbus. They found out he had fucking slave teeth. They got pissed. <laughs> I mean, they're so mad, black people. They went back 3,000 fucking years to start lynching people. Columbus, I don't know. He might have a problem there because even Mad Cuomo was like, wait a second. <laughs> That's, That's an ancestor. Something for the Italians. You yeah, know did they saying? put like blood on, put red paint on his hands? He got blood on his hands. It's like, what the fuck? Listen, once they fucking changed Columbus Day, I knew we fucked up. Now that I think they're going to change Halloween. To what? To what? Uh, Saturday. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> we, I still get candy, though, right? Halloween. Uh, no, Lee. Yeah, good luck. Nobody <laughs> wants your fucking COVID lace fingers on my kids' candies. Right? No, no, no. I want candy. Fuck your kids' candy. I want, I want my own candy. You're going to have to give candy out with a mask on and gloves on and oh, all that shit's good. done. This is going to oh, be a pathetic God. Halloween. I guarantee they're going to invent the Zoom virtual boohoo. Or some shit. <laughs> yeah, like my kids got to stay at home and faggotize them now <laughs> to this end. Some guy called me the other day. Your kid, my kid wants to hang out with your kid. I said, all right, let's do it Sunday. Last night, 10 o'clock, me and my wife were watching something Saturday. And fucking, he texted like at 10 o'clock, tell Joey I didn't check with my wife. Well, you tell Joey. You just told me Friday. Why are you calling my wife, you fucking pussy? And he tell Joey that uh, we have to go to a Zoom party on Sunday. What's up? Well, that takes 10 minutes. I want to see a Zoom party. Like, I want to see fucking rape. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't want to see a Zoom party. I don't want to see a good woman get raped. You're not coming to my birthday party then? You're not going to come to my Zoom birthday party Not in time? a million fucking years with eight people, 11 people online. The other day somebody told me I spit wine on my fucking computer during a Zoom happy hour. You should have been electrified. <laughs> I hope you would have got electrocuted right there. You're going to be there tipping wine and shit. How old are we? People How are too old much, are we? Man. They're too much. They're too... Bro, they, we love be goofy kidding, technology. Man. The more goofy technology they give, Tic Tac. What the fuck is that? Oh, that's stupid. You don't like that either? Tic Tac? Yeah. No, I don't even know what it is. You don't do the dances with your daughter? Fuck no. It's like a two screen, like uh, kind of like, you know, better version of Instagram for videos. But oh, it's I don't, just for I don't kids, do, uh, I don't, yeah, like, All I see is the dances. But, but it is, that is the one funny thing about this. Is some people like are losing their minds about like not being like able to see their friends and stuff. I'm fine. <laughs> like, I, I'm, a little, I'm losing it a little bit. But for the most part, I, I'm good. I don't need to Zoom anybody or see anybody. You just got to go get air like once a day. You have to go outside. Yeah. You got to well, move. Man. Yeah. Listen, when I was, I, I thought, as soon as this went down, I broke down my prison day. And I saw what I did in the parameters of offense within a day and how you make it work. So Studio City, where this area where I live is, was my fence. I just got a big offense. Everything was closed. Mm. For how long? So that's prison. I'm not walking into 7-Eleven. Ever since COVID started, I was already... Losing patience to 7 Eleven. That's last, Germ Central right there. The last year and a half, I've been losing patience to 7 Eleven. Every time you go in there, I got to give a dollar to some homeless dude. <laughs> they are the worst homeless people available to mankind. They're always in a wheelchair. They always got shit on them and shit. Just walking in there is COVID. What about the night some fucking lady attacked me and Lee because we pulled up and I didn't turn my headlights off? And she started yelling at me and Lee, so I put the high beams on her. And then you made me try to go give her a dollar, and she wouldn't even. <laughs> she was homeless as fuck, and she wouldn't take it. She just stared at me. I'm angry. Because you were the. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, this, was a, pers- this was a prison. So I, I broke it down <laughs> to the same fucking thing. I'm on a parameter. What can I do? Before I fucking went to prison, I rode a bike, I played a lot of basketball. But guess what happened when I went to prison? You got to become a runner. You know how when COVID started and the next day everybody was rocky? 
Remember uh, two days after? Nobody home? was jogging before. By Wednesday, everybody was rocking. <laughs> Headband and shit. You got in your car. A bunch of kids chasing a white dude. I mean, it was just, I never seen so many people become rocky in their fucking life. When you go to prison, you become rocky. Okay? You either could become rocky for an hour, or you could sit in your cell for an hour. So you become rocky for an hour. What's the other option you have in prison? Religion. Everybody goes, they, everybody just, this guy just lit his kids on fire. He walks into prison, he finds Jesus. Really? That easy. You've been walking around for 10 years, going to parties, and Jesus was never there. And now you go to the depths of depths, and Jesus is automatically there. And these motherfuckers walk around with the Bible. They start quoting shit. The Bible? They look- oh, they get the Bible, and they start quoting shit, and then some of the types. Come here, yeah, he let his kids on fire. <laughs> sold them by the pieces. So, you know. Like these these are horrible people. And all of a sudden they find Jesus in fucking jail. And you expect my guy like me to believe it. And how, sure enough, I would watch all those guys. How convenient. I would watch all those guys on the day they were gonna get checked out. Like all those guys who were Bible beaters. You watch them, and you watch them hit the gate, they give them the hell dollar check. And once they get that check, you see him walking down and like 50 yards away from the gate, you see the Bible go up in the air like, it's over. It's over. I'm going back to raping bitches. I don't care what the Tenth Amendment says. The Tenth Commandment, thou shalt not rape midgets. I'm back. I'm done. I don't give a Frenchman's fuck. You know, you just, you find, and this is all jokey and shit, but when I got in there, I just found the ways to avoid my room. And then there was ways that it was inevitable. So I would watch TV a certain time. I would do this a certain time. But my job was to, this time was different. I have a child. So I'm in prison with my kid. So I gotta help my kid draw. And I gotta get ear beatings on a book and you know, this is it, but it also has made me re-fall in love with everybody in the house. We got really tight through all this. It's quality time. All time is quality time now. Listen, today she started camp, and I am fucking a lot. You know, I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait to go home and see what the report is. Today she starts camp and kickboxing. This is a big day today. <laughs> Let's see what the house brings tonight. It's a little camp you know for two or three weeks until they figure out what the other fucking camps open and tomorrow night tonight we'll see what's going on at four o'clock when i get home because she has to come home from camp take a shower then go to kickbox and then take another shower so we got her on the covid you know what i'm saying she's getting breathed on all day with <laughs> protest of breath allergic to allergy breath you know because these kids that are allergic to peanuts, you know they're getting COVID. Oh, see, if you that's don't eat peanuts, thing. you're going to fucking die. You're going to die. So it's just, I'm ready for that shit. You know, it's just a mental uh, thing. But it last, seriously, man, I, I, I really appreciate you being my friend for a long fucking time. I mean, we go back to the Felipe's rooms with Willie. Yeah, man, tortillas. Tortillas. How good was that fucking burrito, well, though? Oh, uh, the green burrito. The green burrito. That's pork. Oh, yeah. dude, that shit was off the fucking That was road, part dude. of my contract back then. <laughs> you had a rider back then? I had a rider back then. Felipe, there was always a burrito, a green burrito for cooking. Felipe always took care of me. Yeah, I was 400 pounds. I would eat a huge dinner at the house, and that gig would start at 8.30. Right? Hey, nine, 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 nine? Nine. Nine, nine. So you get that a quarter to nine. Edwin would be smoking joints outside. We'd go out the back door with the little manager. He'd leave the door open for you. Yeah, awesome. And we'd smoke the joint by the by the hospital. Yeah, that's a Beverly Hospital. Right Beverly there. Hospital. We'd smoke the joints out there. There'd be eight of us out there, guys. Forty dollars in a burrito. You guys are at home going. What are you talking about? Forty dollars in a burrito. That was as good as it got. That, and you saw how many people, Willie, me, you, Jeff Garcia. I mean, there was 10 of us. 10 of us. So Fly. Fly. Head. Head. Head, who started showing up yeah. in Lee's open mics. Yeah, we've seen him on fe- Facebook a lot. Yeah, he lives up here now. 
our head. You know, there was just so many fucking pops. <laughs> you know, Armando. I mean, people were out every night. You saw yeah, these people. Alfred. Alfred. You saw all these fucking people, you know. Chapel. And, and, and that's what I was trying to explain to, to Cassius. I miss that camaraderie. Listen, I wish I made the money Kevin Hart had. You know why? Because I think I'd just bring my friends and take over a floor. <laughs> like I bring over six comics that have been on the podcast. And that's what I would do. If I if I was selling an arena out, are you fucking kidding me? I'd bring all my friends. It'd just be a week of goof. Take over first class, light on fire. Hell yeah. <laughs> we go back to gun. You know, you ever see the fucking documentary from Motley Crue on Netflix? Yeah, yeah. When, when he's like, they're the craziest motherfuckers of all time. And they show, what's his name, running naked behind the fucking, the security guard is chasing him. And then he <laughs> runs out and they run in and steal his coke and shit. You know, that's what the road was for. Yeah, fucking The road mayhem. wasn't to do road like what I was doing now. <laughs> Going to my room at 11, staying up till 1. It's, to, you know, but you don't have the energy no more. In my mind, if you pay that money to come see me, I want to be the best of you. I can't do a show hungover. I have two beers. I get fucking hungover. And they go on a fishing trip during the day? Yeah. Come back. Look at Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> oh, damn. Sunburn. I got third degree sunburn last week, guys. I had sun uh, poisoning sun, sun, Wednesday night. God damn. You it's, stayed out too long. No. I did what I do all the time. This is why I was going to bring this up today. California, you're not going to believe what's happened in the last 90 days. So whenever you tell me we're going to the beach, like if you call me and you go come to Riverside, I got a beautiful beach for you and your family, I'll go beautiful. I'm going to make tacos. I'll be down there in an hour. <laughs> First thing I do is I take a shower. When I come out of the shower, I dry my hair, everything, get ready. But then I put a layer of number fucking 10 on me. Like a layer of number fifty, I don't know, whatever my wife has. SPF, whatever. So the it fuck. sits underneath and I and I air dry. I let it get into my pores. And then as soon as I get to the beach, I do another layer. And then twenty five minutes in, when that first bead of sweat comes out, that means it's time for another layer. Then you go in the ocean and you come out and you do another layer and then you do another layer every half hour. I did that all day. Guess what happened though in California? Nobody's driving. So the pollution's gone. So the sun is that much stronger. It's like being in Colorado. When you live in Colorado. There's no extra layer. You go out for 10 minutes, you come back, you look like fucking, uh, you know, John Jones. You're like, what the fuck? What happened to me? I, went <laughs> I was white when I left the house. I came back <laughs> African-American. Because you're, out, you're in, you know, whatever thousand feet elevation. And the sun, you're closer to the sun. It makes sense that you burn. I go to the beach once a week with my wife. I do the same process every week. I've never gotten this sizzled. I got out of that fucking car. When I got out of that car, I was done. I couldn't even move. I had to take a. Sh I had to take one of those washwood showers <laughs> where the water's cold. They used to put the juice in there first. One of those washwood showers. Fuck cryotherapy. Hitler invented cryotherapy. <laughs> they saying the Japanese did. Does it that cold? That's the only way I could take a shower. I had to put the water on super cold. I took a shower, and about an hour later, dog, I started getting dizzy. I thought I was going to puke. I washed my hands. I stuck my finger down my throat. Then I started getting chills, and I had to put a hooded sweatshirt on and sit on my couch and just shake. The house was 70 degrees. I was just shaking from being cold because my body therm thermitis. The, the last two days, I haven't been able it to leave. It fucked up your body temperature. The last three days, I haven't been able to leave the house. I got to leave the house with shirts on, and I can't come in contact, direct contact with the sun because the sun goes right through the T-shirts, and it burns the sun. You have no fucking idea what I go. Oh, bro, every week during this coronavirus, I've had a different adventure. <laughs> I just don't give it that much fucking... Uh, for two weeks, I was in a pissing spree. Once the cortisol fear went off, all that water I lost, that water weight, I was pissing every 10 minutes. I never seen nothing like that in my life. I even called the doctor. I can't stop fucking pissing. What do I do? <laughs> I was pissing. I pissed myself. I almost crashed my car the one day because I got out. And I didn't put the brake on. And the car <laughs> kept rolling. And I had my dick out. And all of a sudden, the pants slapped on it. And it was coming out like a sprout because I got to pull the skin back. <laughs> 
It's, 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 it's been a hell of a coronavirus, ladies and gentlemen. Huh. I whacked off one night, and then when I do, you, you know, sometimes you whack off in your chair. I whacked off in my chair, and I held the tip because I'm uncircumcised. I hold the tip for a little while, and it'll all fill up. It, yeah. it turned into like a cobra. It looks like a cobra dick. And I must have been high. I fell asleep, and I woke up with ghoul in my pants and shit. <laughs> You know, it's been an adventure, people. <laughs> nobody fucking, nobody had a good time with the coronavirus. You found out all your weaknesses. If you're a loser, you found out. Over <laughs> I did. I found out I was a straight up fucking loser over this virus. You know? But I'm happy you made it today, dog. That's Hell yeah. It. And that's that. It's a Monday morning fucking podcast. Just trying to spread some love and keep it fine. I don't want to argue. I don't want to yell at nobody. You know, Saturday, again, a fuck another UFC last week. So wait a second. I just watched them burn a gas station, a Wendy's in Atlanta. They just burnt it, and you want me to watch 19 fights in the UFC? It ain't happening. I didn't watch a minute of those fights fucking Saturday. No, it's over. No, I watched fights all fucking week. Riots, yelling, (laughs) screaming. I I want to watch more fights? That'll poison your fucking mind. I don't know what he's thinking. There's something to watch. I don't know. Oh, my God. I, Everybody's I, fighting. I could not. I don't want to watch fights. It's it's ridiculous. It's like, dog, this is all we're talking about right now. Could you imagine being on a flight to Abu Dhabi right now for that for that island, a 20-hour flight or whatever it's going to be? Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> Are they fucking crazy? Even on a private plane, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> I gotta go all the way to Abu Dhabi to get into a fist fight. <laughs> That's what you're trying to fucking tell me at this point in my life. Like, even if you're a UFC fighter right now, a lot of them aren't fighting, you know. I don't blame them. A lot of them are like, we're not fighting, not they're even not because w- of the money. Yeah, they were with This that. is just scary. It's they're just a little that, bit uh, fucking scary. And if the pe- fight must go on bullshit. And if people really know the root of all this, they would go, wow, we didn't know that. Well, I'll let them find out all the time. They have to fight. They, ha- you know, they have to keep that name brand alive. ESPN don't lift the rock. So, as it's, it looks, it's starting to get embarrassing. You know, it's starting to get embarrassing. I don't give a fuck. I don't pay attention to it. I won some money on the card last week, but even last week, I didn't rent the main card. I didn't want to keep seeing fighting. That's a ball. I moved to a bet and then not even buy the main card. You're like, yeah. fuck it. I already made the money. Fuck it. Yeah. I, you know, I don't want to watch all that fighting. The prelim card was enough. There's people fighting all over the fucking country. Right now, I shouldn't be watching fighting. Even football, I don't really want to see. Let's get some baseball going. Baseball's nice. <laughs> People are nice when they play baseball, right? Every once in a while, you get hit in there with a baseball and 20 <laughs> Japanese come out from the back. Oh, they're going to be mad. At, remember when people were mad at Houston? Remember when that was a thing for cheating? Now we don't give still a fuck mad about at Houston. Houston. I don't know. No, it's over. They just want <laughs> baseball. You know why they didn't get mad at, at that and that pissed me off? That's a real smack in the face. To get caught like that? No, that they didn't. Pete Rose is somewhere right now getting therapy. Because they won't let him because in Because he league. put a bet on a bunch of games. And, hey, I disagree with the Pete Rose thing. You know what, man? He fucked up. He fucked up. Greatest player. One of the greatest top five players ever to live. Five positions. Five positions. Always got the party started. Charlie Hustle, man. Always knew how to get the party started. He don't. He's not going to go to the Baseball Hall of Fame. I grew up idolizing that dude. The same way I idolized Bruce Lee. I love Pete Rose. That's how you do whatever you do in life. You do it like Pete Rose. Wasn't he a coach on a team? And then one day he just said, fuck it. He went inside, played for for the team, and, and he helped them like, win the was, game. He was like a player coach. Yeah, he was like, fuck well, it. he was also betting from the fucking dugout. Yeah. He, he was, was notorious for that shit. Dugout. Now, let me ask you a question. Is he the first guy to ever do it? Or the no. last guy? Fuck no. Look what we're finding out now. That's worse than gambling on baseball. All those guys involved on that in my world should get kicked out of baseball. But we didn't give it the media attention that it deserved. Yeah, they Wait a second. This isn't cheating in Las Vegas. This isn't cheating. First of all, cheating is cheating. Okay, let's get that straight. Cheating is cheating, but you cheated in baseball. Like, we got a timeout. Why are we going to start the season? 
And these three guys are still arguing. Oh, Joey Cora. And I'm not mad at Houston. Everybody was involved. Let me tell you something. There was a lot more teams that were named that were involved. Yeah, I mean, the Red Sox, we, we lost our manager because he because of what happened when he was with Houston. And uh, I'm, I'm sure it happens all the time. They just I, revealed the, the, the Yankees. The Yankees. Yankees. Yeah. We're doing the this. Yankees, too, yes. But every, yes. everybody says it's, it's a common practice. It's a common practice. The thing is, it's just like they just brought it's it out the com- box. You have to assume it. It just got a little out of control. Yeah, because they were using, like, it's electronics just, right. in the dugout were, yeah. and shit. That more was, sophisticated. It was a little bit more sophisticated. Yeah, they, they were just stupid and were banging a, a trash can every time. That's, oh, that's so easy to catch. <laughs> that's Little League shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give it two kicks. He's throwing a curveball. They didn't give that as much <laughs> air as they did. Nah. They, I would have looked into that a little deeper. I would have suspended the players for this year. Do you for think, sure. as far as uh, Pete Rose, you think they're going to reinstate him one day? The way it looks now? Pete Rose is an example. And listen, I'm a human being. I don't know how to react to things all the time. I make mistakes. We all do as human beings. One thing I will tell you is he reacted kind of weird. I think he's talking shit, and it's kind of personal. Like, it's like me leaving here going, Lee, this is your podcast office from now on. Joey's done. You do what you want. Except don't fucking ever have Pete Rose on, please. Hold on to that decision forever. That's what I think the Pete Rose thing is. Like behind closed doors, Pete did a little bit more. Got blacklisted. And they just said, leave him the fuck on the fuck. Antonio Sabato Jr. is working construction in Florida because of Trump. A couple Trump tweets or some shit. Really? Like that's That's crazy. fast your life changes. It has been, right now, it is the last three and a half weeks, four weeks, it has been the worst time to be on social media ever. Oh, yeah. I don't care what you say to me or yourself. It is pathetic what's going on on social media right now. You know, it's pathetic. And even when I try to go on there to lighten things up, I get fucking screamed at. (laughs) I get screamed at, which is the first time ever in 10 years of social media. People dissect words like I've never been dissecting them before. So guess what? Stay on social media. First of all, when you go on there and read this shit, you know, it's just a bunch of uneducated people putting up shit. And now you're getting even more shit thrown at you than the fucking television. So why are we watching this shit? This is worse than what you're doing now. Why are you watching this shit? I go online sometimes just to check in, you know. Maybe somebody sent me like a... On the weekends, very seldom do I go on there. Very seldom. If Terry goes to bed early on Saturday, I'll go on there and go on Messenger and check all my Messenger. I have 14, 15 messages. I'll get high and I'll go through them. But as far as... Stay on them on Saturday and Sunday, especially now more than ever. I avoid it. I think I avoid it after Wednesday because there's no winning right now. Nobody wants to. Everybody wants to fuck. There's always three people that attack you. Yeah, yeah. I used to get attacked once a week. Fat man, you abandon your daughter, you know, all that type of shit. It's been higher than ever. Everybody wants to fucking yell at somebody right now. And I get it. That's why I understand the riots. That's why I understand the rage. Yeah. This isn't just, this was a riot thing. You know, this was a race thing. That There's was also fueled a lot of... with six weeks of being at home. Yeah. <clears throat> Waiting on an unemployment check. Waiting on a sub, minimum, whatever, sublingual check, whatever the fuck they call it. Unemployment, all that shit. No, you know, your business going out of business yeah. because you got to pay unemployment. You know, a lot of people were in pain already. You know, how would you feel if you were the fucking owner of that shoe store last week, Sunday night, and you're watching your Melrose store get kicked in and people running out with your shoes? Our buddy, Dante Chang, yeah, his, store, his got, store got just fucking decimated. Really? Yeah, they took everything. Yeah. Dante's one of the coolest. That's right there on, uh, on Melrose. My yeah. heart goes out to Dante Chang. What's the name of his store? Uh, Flashback. Flashback. So when Flashbacks opens up, please support it. Dante Chang is a great fucking kid. I'm very sorry about that. How would you feel? If you're at home, you just hugged your kids. 
empty. You know, you sit down <laughs> and they're looting on Melrose and you're like, ah, that's a little far from my <laughs> joint. But they're getting closer and closer. Now you got to make a choice. Do you get a machine gun, an AR-15 and run down there and stay in front of your business? I would just done what that do you do? Korean style. And do get four fucking people with you to stand there with you. And you Who's know. really going to want to stand with you and possibly shoot somebody? That's another yeah. thing. Are they, you know what I mean? A lot of factors involved. So, uh, you know, this has been a wild fucking ride for a lot of people, man. But again, it's Monday, you bad motherfucker. Powder those nuts. <laughs> it's going to be a fucking good week. <laughs> California is not going to be as hot as last week. Well, last week was brutal yes. here. But this week, fuck it. You're going to hear birds chirping again. It's going to be nice and cool in the morning for my little bike rides. I got my little bike. Wait until I bust out a picture. <laughs> I've been standing out incognito. Would you do a calendar with you on the bike? Bro, somebody busted me the other day. <laughs> oh, uh, they saw you? Somebody was at the light, and I was at the light. <laughs> and I had to cross that way, and they were like the third car. And I'm sitting there, and I forgot to pull my mask up after I drank water. It's the, it's like 10 yards where I usually stop to get water because it's shade. And I see what time it is, and then I finish my last loop. And I'm like, nobody's going to see me on this bike. Right, and nobody has seen me. I've gone on to traffic head on. Nobody has beeped. <laughs> nobody has done nothing. And yeah, damn, I'm on the corner, all creepy and shit. And I'm about to cross the street, and I hear some guy go, Uncle Joey, is that you on a bike? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and I just kept fucking going. No. I fucking flew in this little alley, and I went down the alley. I could tell he was making a left going to look for me. Fuck that motherfucker. He was part of Antifa. <laughs> and he wasn't going to find Uncle Joey. I'm done, dog. I don't want nobody to see me on that bike. It's embarrassing. <laughs> oh, my God. My wife took a picture of me on the bike. Not good. <laughs> People would pay out of that fucking circus. <laughs> and now, <laughs> your attraction of the night, Uncle Joey on a bike. And there I am, my little red helmet, like a fag, come out with my little mountain bike. Dog, it's a fucking Does nightmare. it have a basket? No, I haven't crossed the line that much yet. Once I put, once you put the basket on, you got to put the condoms in there because you're getting fucked in the ass. Oh. Once you put the basket on, you might as well put Vaseline on there. That means you're giving up asshole in different portals. You know, like when you see, you know, like how this, how this city has set up different bike stands. That's yeah. what you do now. You just go to different bike stands and get fucked in the ass, and they got a basket. But Lee, you should ride one of those bikes. You know what? As soon as you said it, that's all I could think of. I was like, well, what am I waiting for? It's yeah. right there on the corner. Right by Jersey Mike's. No, right there by the. Why would you go to Jersey Mike's? One of those people eating those filthy no, sandwiches. No, I'm saying the, the bikes. You don't want to touch those germs. You know what is better? Where? You know when nobody has touched the bike? Where? Marie E. D. Oh, they do have a bike there. Right in front of that liquor store. They haven't moved. I'm just, I'll just go I buy a helmet. Have, I asked that lady one day. I went to buy a lotto ticket. Um, I wonder if the tires are okay. Yeah, go get the helmet. I want to see what helmet you're going to wear. Oh, eight, eight, it looks like 8,000 extra. Yeah. My helmet. You might as well get a Nazi helmet and make it complete. Go to Sherman <laughs> Oaks on Saturday. Drive around with your little Nazi helmet. All the Hasidic Jews walk in the temple. You <laughs> petrify those motherfuckers and yell, Black Lives Matter. I bet they have one at the Army Surplus store. Go ahead, go for it at this point. That's all it's going to fit, either that or fucking Boom Boom Mancini's <laughs> football helmet from the eighth grade. Somebody who's got a big nugget like mine. Oh, You got to see, it's just a little shell on my head. It ain't going to do nothing. I'm still going to die. This don't do nothing. It's just a little shell. <laughs> I look like a Chinese guy with that got one of the, you know those little old Chai Japanese and Vietnamese hats. That's what it looked like. It just covers me perfectly. Look at my look at my face how it's burnt. So that's the part it's missing. What's that? No, we're I, like I have like a little. That's where the visor. sun's hitting you. Yeah, the sun fucking. But once you put listen, I leave the house at like ten to seven sometimes. Oh, you've been calling me so early recently. There's not a car oh. in the street. You just pop the left, and as soon as I pop the left. I feel this fucking warmth from the sun. Already hitting you? Well, it just hits you right oh. off the bat, and it feels like heaven. Feels like cotton. And, you know, I just keep riding, and I try not to stop, you know. Your mouth gets dry with that fucking mask on, though. You're walking around like Alibaba in the fucking desert. <laughs> I mean, you're fucking dry, dog. I finished... The Ten of water before I even get back home. It's gone. You dry up with that fucking mask quick. And that's the thing. They don't want you to, your throat to dry during this. 
because that's when these fucking Ebola germs, COVID in there. germs, could sit in there. So you have to keep hydrated. Hydrated is the biggest fucking weakest word ever. When I was a kid, I didn't drink water for 12 hours. It was fun. <laughs> I played all day in 90 degree weather. The other day we're at the beach. My, my wife wouldn't stop. We have to get Mercy out. She must be dehydrated by now. She's in the ocean. She's Cuban. She's sucking the water in through her fucking little holes. I guarantee you. We even yelled, you thirsty? She's like, no. Why would she be thirsty? <laughs> Only white people get thirsty at the beach. We're Cubans. We go 12 hours without a glass of fucking water. 12 hours. But you ride your bike without a mask? Oh. That shit gets dry quick, bro. Dry. You're breathing. You're huffing. You're puffing. You're going up a hill. It's a fucking nightmare. But it's gotten me through this fucking day. So we all found something. Some people found quaaludes. <laughs> Some people found dicks in the ass. Some people found fucking uh, calming drugs. The bicycle saved my life. So who gives a fuck? Rodrigo, what do you got on the books? What are your plans for the rest of the year? Well, fucking, uh, we're going to start going out on the road again in July. And that's July 17th through the 19th in, uh, at the Houston Improv with Felipe. So... We'll see what the fuck happens after that. He's got a pretty full schedule. After yeah, that. those are the the, the couple uh, the date he gave me. So I don't. Know, I guess it's gonna be the start off date and shit. I'm proud of you. It's good to see you. Twenty years now. Yeah, man. Twenty years I've been seeing your face. You never gave up. You're still doing your podcast. You still do your little room in Riverside. Yeah, we got that. Uh, we got that going on. We're gonna bring it back, you know, details and shit with the whole fucking COVID. Isn't shit. That, the same place I did. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful. It's, it's a, a beautiful life art center. Right Listen, there man, in, uh, you're, you're making Riverside. it happen. You're a comic, no matter where the fuck you are. We did our little acting classes, right? We yeah. did the best we can. We did the best we can. This is it. This is what it's all about. It's just swinging for the fucking fences and seeing where the ball lands. Who gives a fuck? Exactly. The rest of them could suck my dick. I'm happy you got to, uh, where can they follow you at? Instagram, at RodrigoTorres.com, uh, at Rodrigo Torres Jr., and then uh, Twitter as well, at Rodrigo Torres Jr. And uh, What's Up Fool Podcast. Yeah, What's Up Fool Podcast. We got over uh, 290 episodes with Felipe Esparza, and uh, Martin Rizzo's on the gig now. And, uh, I He's do on a, the podcast? Yeah, too? yeah. And I do a podcast in Spanish with Martin Rizzo, uh, Los Podcasters del Norte. Okay. We got 15 episodes available in my my own podcast, Yeah Man Podcast. And uh, yeah, man, that's all we got going. So we just hustling. The same shit that we always did, you know, with this whole bullshit that happened, adapted, had, you know, got my old little trade back for a minute and, you know, just doing it. Just, you know, trying to, you know, make some decimals, keep your head above water. Not everybody gets unemployment, all that bullshit. So, you know, you got to adjust and you got to. Um, You'd be subsist. bored right now if you hadn't been doing anything for a few months. <laughs> oh, exactly. Exactly, dude. But, uh, but uh yeah man just uh just keep on trucking dog well i'm proud of you man That's i'm it. happy you found time hell yeah for the church and what's happening now motherfucker on a monday morning real quick let me talk to you about a few things number one irvine is scheduled for the 2015 20 set brea irvine improv and brea is scheduled for the 25th to the 27th of june i do not know what's going on yet they said they confirmed monday that it might only be 100 tickets, so that's all I have. I think they yanked July 31st from Las Vegas. I think August 1st is done in San Diego, and I think I got Utah still on the 2nd and 4th, but I'm also waiting on the Soprano shoot, so everything is up in the air, guys. I'm not going out any other dates. I'm not in void till we find out what this is. I will be having a residency in Brea, Starting in July, every other Tuesday, you know. Uh, again, there'll be no meeting greets. So if you come into meet and greet, we'll let you know when they start. I don't want to take your money. I'm going to keep the tickets at $20 on Brad. I'm working out. I'm just trying to get a new hour and trying to feel out the audience and how I'm going to feel on stage. And if I should either move forward with this or that's it, move on. You know, that's that's what the plan is right now. Hopefully we get the book out by February. Hopefully we get the movie out by September 12th. And then we'll see how we feel then. But right now is not the time to be making travel plans to Europe in September. <laughs> I have a funny feeling they're going to be fucking putting the squash on all that shit. Whether you're slinging dick or you're at home, you always want your balls to be comfortable. You always want to be comfortable. And what you're wearing should be tip-top magoo. 
This might not have this. This might not be the summer you had in mind. I get it. But you know what? Changing your underpants can change your fucking mindset. You motherfuckers, I've been telling you from the beginning. You get up in the morning, you take a shower, you get dressed, you change your clothes. It's all over. You got to go with me undies. That is the way to go. I've been working with them. They've been working with me for years. Not because I'm a fucking whore. Because I love what they do. I got me undies on right now. I got a whole drawer full of them. They're the best underwear going. You go to jujitsu. You want to keep your balls clean. You go to the girl's house to get your little pole sucked afterward. Wear some me undies. You can roll for an hour. They have a material. It's Moldol. Fucking tremendous. It makes your balls feel like they're getting cradled. By a little midget's hand. You ever, you ever see a little midget's hand? He's nice and thick. Well, anyway, that's just a fantasy. No matter what, they're made from micro moldal fabric. It's actually made from trees. And they come in all shapes and sizes, from extra small to 4X. All bodies welcome. Even fat motherfuckers like me. They got a great offer for the church family. For any first-time purchases, they're going to give you 15% off and free shipping. Listen, MeUndies is the only underwear for me. Now you got to get the balls to try it. You're going to be tweeting me going, Joey, why haven't you told me about these before? And they also have 100% satisfaction guarantee. To get your 15% off, go to MeUndies.com slash Joey. I'm going to give you 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash Joey. I want to thank MeUndies.com slash Joey. I want to thank CBDLion.com slash Church. I want to thank my brother Rodrigo Torres. Yeah, man. And fucking the uh, uh, What's Up Fool podcast. podcast. Yeah, man podcast. And the other many Latin projects he has. I want to thank the fucking Jew, the Christ killer. <coughs> but most importantly... Sorry, I had a pubic hair in my throat. I want to thank you fucking animals for listening and for being part of the church family. Hey, we're not stars. We're not Dave Chappelle. We're just trying to give you nothing but heart and a little bit of laughter on a Monday fucking afternoon, Monday morning, all right? Stay black. Have a good week, and we'll see you Wednesday. Tip-top motherfucking Magoo. Kick this fucking meal, Lee Lee Leland. <laughs>